Hey guys, welcome back to Shiny Bright Doggo. Welcome back to the channel. We are so excited to have you here. If you are new to our channel, because we have almost 7,300 subscribers now, which wow. is crazy. Um, if you're new to our channel, Janine and I are collectors of vintage holiday. So that's vintage Christmas, vintage Halloween, kitschy cute finds from the mid century. We mainly collect and we part-time resell to help fund our collection and our hobby. Um, so whether you are somebody who is a collector yourself or you are a reseller looking to learn a little bit more in-depth information about vintage holiday and mid-century goods, uh, hit that subscribe button because we put out videos twice a week, every Tuesday and Friday. Today, we're going to an estate sale. I think I'm number 21 or so, and it looked like there was a lot of good stuff. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's going to be left because I am numbers 20. Usually the estate sales let in like the first 10 or 15 so people. Um, but we're going to head in and just as a disclaimer, um, I don't film right away because I use both my hands to look through everything. I got to get better with that GoPro. I'm working on it. But yeah, we're going to head in, see what we can find and hopefully walk away with some great treasures. Let's go. So here I'm taking a look at the Christmas stuff because you never know what you're missing. You know, the first time you go in, it's very overwhelming. So I find this vintage stocking and I spot a pile of textiles and I come across a tablecloth. I'm really excited to see that. They resell really well, so I put that in my bag. I also collect the tablecloths and then I came across this adorable bunny plush. I put that right in the bag to look at later. I go back into the basement and I see these boxes of Christmas lights. These are so cool and definitely from the mid-century, probably the 1960s. Um, I'm contemplating picking them up because the boxes are so big, but I love the artwork. In the basement, there's also this under staircase area um, and I come across some, you know, cookie cutters and things that are probably from the 70s, which is always fun to see. And I also come across this utility closet with these vintage Brillos. That was really cool to see. And, you know, people collect stuff like that. This estate sale had so many cool vintage games like this Lightbrite. So exciting. I also came across a Cootie and also a lot of games that I've never seen before. Now, I wasn't too sure how they were going to price things out at a lot of the estate sales that Janine and I go to. Um they don't price anything out which we we like because usually the bigger the pile the better the price they give for everything so that's something that i keep in mind but i had been to this estate sale company sales before and they usually give a pretty good deal so i wasn't too afraid to fill up my bag um, i was pretty confident that i was going to get a pretty nice deal on whatever i picked up but it was really fun to see these vintage games I took a look outside the window and the line was still there and I had been in the house probably for like 40 minutes at this point. I came across this other room that had a really nice mid-century looking desk and I spun around because I saw this baby scale. It was only $20 which I think was a fair price considering how big it was and how minty it is. It's really nice. Always got to look at the plush. These were looking a little bit newer than that bunny plush that I picked up initially. But this little raccoon was sort of cute. I almost picked him up, um, but I decided to leave him behind um, with his other friends here. I'm sure somebody will pick them up. I went upstairs to check out the bedrooms and I came across a linen closet. Vintage linens can do really well. I recently sold a vintage Lily Pulitzer uh, tablecloth for less than it could probably go for so definitely do your research but it went to a viewer I assume so I'm, I was happy about that but yeah uh, vintage tablecloths bedding towels they have a really good resale value and they're just so pretty the ones from like the 60s and the 70s with bright colors are usually going to be your best sellers I came across this box of new old stock which I found exciting um and I was thinking at this point, if I can find some really nice pillowcases that could resell, um, I could potentially recoup the money spent for the entire haul or the entirety of the items I got at this estate sale. So that was sort of my thinking process at this point. I'm looking for the patterns that I think would resell the best. Um, and because these are new old stock, I think they have a higher potential of reselling on eBay. Um, so there were a lot of patterns to look through. They were really pretty. I was thinking of keeping some for myself as well. 
uh, at this point trying to uh, see how many duplicates there are of each pattern um, but I really fell in love with this like pink 60s 70s floral pattern and I ended up finding I think five in total um, so that made me really happy something that I could try to sell to recoup the money spent in the same bedroom I came across a bookcase that had a few books on it hey guys <laughs> it had a few books on it um, but I saw this Betty Crocker cookie book right off the bat I believe the date was 1963 which I found pretty surprising um, and I flipped through it to take a look at the illustrations um, which aren't as cute as I was expecting but I still thought it was a great book so I picked it up still in this bedroom and I came across some bathroom like hand towels and fell in love with that first two pieces that you guys just saw so I'm digging through the bin trying to find a matching like full size towel to it um, I almost thought I had it there but I, I don't see any matches there was a lot of pinks and pastels at this estate sale really pretty stuff that I know a lot of people would have loved uh, to pick up but I did see a lot of people taking a lot of this stuff so it definitely got purchased but I only could find the two washcloths here so I took those and probably will keep them for my own personal use because they're just so pretty in a second bedroom there were still some more kids toys I had a feeling at this estate sale that the family cleared out some of the belongings while there were a lot of kids toys and things from you know obviously the children's childhood I didn't come across any photo albums any personal items that you know were you know I don't know pictures and stuff like that so I really do think the family cleared out what they wanted and this was what was left over um, which is always nice that Christmas tree stand while it was old is pretty common so I left it behind and I came across this scale, which I just thought was so cool and had to show you guys. Still in the box, it was shipped in. How amazing. I picked this up because I literally think we had this in our computer room when I was a kid. Uh, it was pretty nostalgic. And then I came across a pile of bottles. Now, I'm not like in the bottle niche too much, but I saw this Tropicana one and it spoke to me. I think somebody would really like this, so I picked it up. And I then came across some handkerchiefs. And I'm looking for ones that are kitschy, cute, patterned. Um, these were more like, I guess, knitted and woven, which I know do resell. I see them at antique malls a lot, but not something that I really uh, dabble in. So I left them behind for somebody else to pick up, but I did think they were really pretty and fun to look through. Making our way into the kitchen, which was literally like my mid-century dream kitchen. Um, I looked through every single cabinet because I found some crazy things in kitchens, crazy um, holiday stuff. A lot of candles I found. I found girly candles in kitchens. I found Halloween noisemakers in kitchens at estate sales. Um, a lot of like party supplies or napkins. Um, you know, if it's holiday, it, there's a chance that it's all over the house. So... I always make sure to check every drawer in the kitchen, um, in every room. So kitchens are surprisingly uh, where you can find some hidden gold. But this drawer was sort of fun to look through. I wasn't too sure what that was. It looked vintage, but it wasn't. Um, and here I am. Yeah, I'm basically just looking for any of those like candles or, you know, magnets even. You could find a lot of magnets in drawers that are vintage. Um, just a fun drawer to look through. But nothing that spoke to me except this cutting board built in love that i need to have that in my future kitchen and always fun to see vintage or not even vintage but older packaging that they don't make anymore um this stove was so cool the knobs everything about it was really fun to see and then i don't know how old this is but the speckly countertop was sort of fun um, and then I'm back in this first room. This is where I found all the Christmas when I first walked in that I wasn't able to capture on camera. It was sitting right on this table. I can't wait to show you guys. Make sure you stick around for the haul to see everything that I got, um, a lot of which will be available for sale in the next upcoming months. But yeah, this house had a lot of hidden gems. I'm taking a second look here to make sure I don't miss anything because I, I do tend to do that on the first round. I have to go back. Like these uh, honeycomb bells. I think somebody actually put these back. I grabbed those because how could I not? This woman also had a large collection of yarn in a very 70s color palette. I didn't pick any of those up. And then there were some curtains, which I looked through, but um, nothing really stood out to me. So I left those behind, but they were still fun to see. Definitely still usable. 
And then I came across this box, which had a bunch of different stuff in it. It was fun to see. Some pins for, I guess, maybe hats or scarves. Really fun packaging. And these little boxes were interesting. I was like, what is that? So I opened it, and it's like a nail polish kit. Really fun. Really cool. I made my way into the basement. Um, there wasn't a ton in the basement. This was not a digger sale, but there was a lot of cool vintage board games down here, too. Um... This stuff probably definitely has a resale value, but board games are really big, um, so you're going to spend more on shipping, and they're, they take up a lot of space when you have a lot of them, so we don't quite have the space to hold and store them as part-time resellers, um, so I'm more so just looking at them for the fun of it, and I fell in love with this one, like how cool is that? Even though I don't pick them up, it's fun to be able to capture them on camera. Now I'm heading upstairs to pay for everything. All right, guys, we are out of that estate sale. It was pretty good. I can't wait to show you everything that we got. I spent a total of $60, which I think is pretty fair considering the stuff I walked out with. So exciting. I grabbed this right away. I could not believe that some of this stuff was still left on the table. This wasn't quite a digger sale. Um, everything was pretty much laid out. And when I did go in, all the blow molds were gone, which I expected, but some of the like vintage Christmas was still on the table. These guys are cute. They're so cute. This is a vintage 1970s made in Hong Kong plastic decor piece. A lot of the times you see these really small and those usually went on cakes and cupcakes. This is definitely like a true decoration piece. This one is more on the elaborate side. It's got a lot of details with the angel in there and the deer. One of them is missing an antler, but that's okay. This has a great resale value. Could probably sell for 30 plus dollars, really dependent on the buyer. It's the nicest one I've ever found, so not sure if we're passing these along. <laughs> if you guys are interested in some of the things we pick up, make sure you follow us here on YouTube. Follow us, of course, and also on Instagram. We announce here on YouTube and on Instagram when we are having any holiday sales. Things that we pick up that aren't holiday, we mainly put up on our Ebays, which are linked in the description. But could you believe this? That's awesome. Here are the two vintage washcloths that I picked up. You guys saw in the video. How pretty is that? Those are so pretty. You can always tell a vintage mid-century textile by a tag that looks similar to this usually always made in usa these are really pretty i couldn't believe there were putts left there so those are so nice too they're so nice these are made in japan they have their japan markings on the bottom these are from the 50s or 60s they're really collectible each of these can sell for 15 or so dollars give or take i got four of them these two and these two they're in really great condition the colors are fantastic and people absolutely love them, including Janine and myself. Yeah, I mean, the, the, sometimes like the doors and windows come out or are falling yeah. out, but you can even buy like reproductions off of like Etsy and stuff yeah. people make and they'll look good as new. Yeah, I wouldn't say it affects the value too much. You really just want one that's in good condition like these are. This plastic angel tree topper was really cool to find. This is probably from the mid to late 60s. It does work. The cord's in pretty good condition. She's really cool. And when she's lit up, she's amazing. She has a great resale value too. I'll likely resell her because I do have one similar to this, but you know, a lot of the times they have a burn hole in the back from mm -hmm. the bulb. This is one is in great condition. So excited to find this vintage stocking. This one belonged to Kenneth and it has a really nice uh, design on it. When you find these felt skinny stockings with this sort of um, screen printed designs on it, these are the more valuable, collectible, sought after stockings. These are probably from the 50s and 60s as well. This one might be a little bit newer just based off the trim and how good of a condition it's in. That's a nice find. Yeah, I didn't capture this on camera. Um, she's in okay condition. She has a lot of repairs. She's very dirty, but I've been on the lookout for an October angel. So I'm happy to pick this up for my own collection. I believe this one might be either a Lepton or a Napco. These, if you find them in good condition and they're October or December for the holidays, they can resell $30 to $60 depending on which style you have. Um, this one's a really fun one. Next one to look out for is what the one where she's holding a jack-o'-lantern, but I was really excited to find her for my own personal collection. First thing I saw when I walked in, he was just laying on the table. I couldn't believe it. I was like, is this anybody's pile? Nobody was around. I was like, I guess he's still available. I couldn't believe nobody picked him up. This is a vintage knee hugger made in Japan from the 50s or 60s. He does have some issues. He's a little bit faded. He's got some like rustiness on him, 
but he'll still resell. If you find a knee hugger, they can resell $15 to $30 plus. Really depends on how cute it is. I think this one's adorable. If you see a tree topper like this, you might think it's a little bit newer because it's plastic, but this is a Bradford tree ornament right from the 1960s. Bradford is a plastic manufacturer from the mid-century and they made a lot of unbreakable tree toppers and ornaments. This is one of their cooler tree toppers. I really love it. It's got a great mid-century look. I think I actually already have one. So I might have to pass this one along. I was so excited to find this vintage Christmas tablecloth. Ooh, it's pretty. It's got some great graphics on it. It does have some stainage, but we will definitely wash this. And the only other issue I found was this little hole right here, but that could be easily stitched up probably. Mm -hmm. With vintage tablecloth graphics, you wanna look for ones that look like this. They are just really ornate and beautiful and a tablecloth like this can resell for $40 or so. Wow. Oh my goodness, this might be one of my favorite finds from today. It's this vintage bunny plush. She is so sweet and she's actually a music box. Like she plays music. Well, wow. she doesn't play music anymore, but she did at one point. She's so sweet. She's probably gonna stay in my collection. She's what, from the 60s you think? Probably, 50s or 60s. I mean, this is pretty, mm -hmm. pretty old. So definitely earlier than the 70s, I would say. This was another thing that was just still on the table and I couldn't believe it. I grabbed it as fast as I could. These Christmas card holders still in the package. I do have one of these, but it's smaller. It's like a different size. This is just so great to hang up and display. And this, I believe, is from 1964, I want to say. 1964, right there. Mm. So a lot older than it looks. It's just in great condition. I love it. Love the graphics. This tree topper was really exciting to find. It's older than I would have expected right off the bat from looking at it. It does not have a barcode. And if you take a closer look, the cord is very thin. The base is made of metal. So these are all indicators that you have an older tree topper on your hands, probably from the 60s. It does work, which was amazing. And it's made in Italy. Sometimes wow. you'll find that vintage Christmas lights are made in Italy. Um, they're primarily made in Italy and Japan in the mid-century, 1950s, 1960s. So this is definitely an older tree topper and it's beautiful lit up. I'm still trying to figure out a way that I can convince you to keep this. <laughs> it's really cool. This is a Commodore nativity set actually which is interesting it's got a beautiful box and what's interesting about this plastic nativity is that it's white almost like 99 percent of the time they wow. are brown so cool the little lamb has broken off but they taped it to the nativity to probably not lose it so i can glue that back on which is really exciting and this is made in hong kong i don't know if the camera will pick it up uh, kind of yeah these nativities that have this look and style are almost always from the 70s including this one this is a really nice one especially since it has the box this could probably resell for 20 plus dollars you got some pillowcases i, I see five vintage pillowcases in the original packaging that's so fun so fun i talked about these for a while in the video and i do plan on reselling them all on ebay i'm hoping to have them listed by the time this video comes out some of them are i just want to let you guys know uh ripped in certain areas this one too but it doesn't seem to be dirtier or anything and you'll take pictures of that and put it when you're on the listings right yep i will and these were kept really nice in the home like very clean house so i don't think these will have any issues but um they're just so 60s 70s you know florals retro looking i think people would really love to have these in their own home so i grabbed these in hopes of recouping the only 60 dollars that i spent at this estate sale which i think is quite a score look at everything that I got. There's some stuff in here that I didn't get to show you guys, um, but you sort of saw in the video, like honeycomb, bell. honeycomb bells. And then I also got a little um, Hawaii mug made in Japan, but with, you know, little uh, cotton spun guys in here. We are suckers for those little things. Love these little things. So that was a good find as well. And I just love this bottle. I had to pick this up too. I think you guys saw this in the video. Um, I'll likely resell this. This would be so fun for the bar though. It would. I thought it'd be really cool if you put your vintage swizzle sticks in there. <gasps> that would be cool. Like all just like laying yeah. in there. That'd be really fun. Or even just putting like an orange uh, piece of paper inside so that this mm. graphic really pops would be a lot of fun. So thanks for joining us guys. We hope you had fun at this estate sale. I'm working on the GoPro. We got to figure that out. I just mm -hmm. hate wearing like 
whole yeah. setup. We gotta work on it. I wanna do better for the estate sale videos, but I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us and seeing what we got. If you guys are enjoying our videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's get ourselves to 8K, which is crazy to think about. Thanks for joining us, guys. See you next time. Bye. Bye.